that, I'd like us to just stand up and I'd like the choir to please help me with a mm -hmm. song. <laughs> Sunday School Sunday, and today our message might be with a little bit of twist. It's on the school if it's interactive, and I hope that we have enough time for this. But before we start, I would like to lay some foundation. And before I start, I would like to thank the pastorate for this opportunity. They didn't give me much of a chance anyways, but <laughs> I thank them for giving me this opportunity to speak. And I pray that God will meet each and every one of us at the very point of our needs in Jesus' name. So today, I will just be encouraging us. And my topic for today is keep the faith. So we've just finished 21 days of fasting. We had 24 hours of praise. And what God will have me encourage everyone with today is to keep the faith. And our Bible reading will be from Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to 11. Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to 11. If you can please project. Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to 11. I'll read from you. I'm reading the NIV version. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the Asians were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And the faith Abel still speaks even, and by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For he was taken and was commended as the one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah was warned about things that were not yet seen. In the holy fear, built, a, built an ark to save his family. And by his faith, he, commended, he condemned the world and became heir of the, righteous, of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when was called to go to a place, he would later receive his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Jacob, as did Isaac and Jacob, 
who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And you might be wondering why I'm talking about faith in the new dawn. And it's because we are transitioning from the topic of the new dawn. And one thing that would keep you in the new dawn is faith. And you might ask, what is faith? I feel this is a very common topic, but sometimes we lose sight of what faith is. We think faith is just believing. But faith is much more than that. Hebrews 11 verse 1 is a common one, which is... I'll read again. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So when I was thinking about this topic, this morning, actually, there was this analogy that came to my head. For parents, you probably get that. For children, you've probably experienced this. You know when you tell your child, oh, go wear slippers, you follow me out. And the child runs to go and get the slippers. Even though you might not take the child out. By the time the child is out, she might have gone. But God is not like that. If God says he's going to take you somewhere, he will take you somewhere. But then are we ready for where he's taking us to? I know we spent the last 21 days and even the last 24 hours praising God, praying to God. But I want to encourage someone to hold on to faith. Believe that what God has said he would do, he would do. And don't just stop at believing, act on it. Just like a child will run and go and get their slippers because mommy said, let's go. It's the same way you should run and prepare for what God is going to do. If you're expecting rain, you should prepare for rain. Don't say, oh, I believe that rain is going to fall, but you're not even prepared for it. And so when it comes, there is nothing for you to receive it, or you might miss it because you did not prepare for it. And as we go further, there are three groups of people that I would like to address. And the first one is, you know, after this journey, we're all filled with faith, we are all pumped up with all our prayers, and we are so sure it's going to come through. And perhaps God has given you a word. And then the enemy being the enemy would come and challenge that word. And my case here is that of Jesus. In Matthew 4, from verse 1 to 11, where he was tempted of the devil, I wouldn't read because of time. But prior to this, there's something interesting that happened. So before this, he had gotten baptized. And then the Spirit of the Lord had descended upon him and said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then he goes on a 40 days fasting, prayers, and then he's out. And the Spirit of God led him to the wilderness. And in this phase, he has just fasted. God has just said that this is my son, whom I'm well pleased. And the devil comes and says, if you are the son of God, if you heard that God said that this is my son, whom I'm well pleased, but the devil is coming to say, if you are the son of God, turn the stone into bread. So it was an attack on his identity. And so for some of us, we've received a word in this season. We've heard what God wants to say. And the devil will come and say, hmm. Are you sure that's what is going to happen? Did God really say it? Or maybe you are so sure that God loves you now, and then you hear the voice that says that, oh, you are not loved. And the second part of the first temptation is, turn the stone into bread. He was hungry. He could have done that. And no one would probably beat him for it. He was Jesus. He could have done that. So perhaps you are hungry for something from God, and the devil is bringing a counterfeit to you. It is very important that we discern clearly. And another thing is, the devil did not come with what was not in scriptures. He backed up everything he was saying with scriptures. And so even in this season, after all this prayer and fasting and everything, the devil could rear up his ugly head. Or maybe you just, you're just there and you believe, you even told God, okay, by this Friday, when I go to the doctors, I want this report to be like this. And then it's a negative report. And then your faith starts to shake. I want you to remember that if God has said it, he's more than able to keep his promises. And so when this temptation comes, when the devil comes to offer you things that are counterfeit to what God has already promised, I want us to remember that if he has said it, he would do it. And then the final thing, the final temptation there was that he said, that if you bow down to me, I'll give you everything. If Jesus was desperate enough, he knew he was going to die. He knew his death was not going to be good. He knew the journey was not going to be easy. 
You could have taken that one ticket. So for some of us, the journey God will have us go through, right now it's even difficult. But don't settle. If you go for the fast route, it's not going to be God's plan for you. And one thing that was important was that the Spirit of God was with Jesus. So even through that temptation, it was the Spirit that led him into where the devil was going to tempt him. And so some of us would go through some trials to test if we are really ready for what God is going to commit into our hands. And say, I am begging, please, it's Sunday school Sunday. Let's keep the word of God in our heart. So that when someone, it might not even be, it might be a friend. Now come, but the, but the Bible says this. If you do not know the word, it could be taken out of context. And you think, oh, they're actually right. Maybe I should do this this way because the Bible doesn't say I shouldn't do it. And so that's the first group of people. Those who might face one difficulty along the way. And if you see how it went, right after this temptation, the angel of the Lord came to be with Jesus. And then his ministry started in full force. So sometimes you'd have that part where it feels like you're tempted in every way, with everything that you desire. Your, your identity has been tested. What you desire has been tested. Every single thing has been tested. Please do not faint. Please do not faint. There is a light at the end of it. There is something that God is doing in that, in that moment. It could just be a test of character. If you really are ready for the assignment. And the second group of people that I'll be talking about, so I'm speeding because of where for, our time is far spent. The second group of people I'll be talking about are those who may feel like, oh, I have prayed, I have fasted. It doesn't look like I see if anything is going to change. But faith is action. So you're praying to God for a new job, but your documents are not ready. Or you don't even have clothes to wave that new job comes. Start shopping for it. It was by faith that all of these patriarchs in the Bible that we had read in Hebrews 11 received the promise that God gave to them. God instructed Abraham to go to a land that he would show him. He didn't know what that is. He didn't know what that was. But perhaps God has told you to come to Canada. Most of us here are immigrants. And it feels like what I, what I thought would happen is not what is happening. But keep that faith. Because it's at the measure of faith that you have that God will meet you. God will not place what you don't have faith for because you would misuse it. You know, the Bible, um, God told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, I will give you. So some of us kind of need to adjust our sight. So how far can you see God taking you? We've done, you've done, we've heard about it. But if you don't see it, you can't have it. So except you start to see it and vision it, perhaps you haven't praying for a child. Start making space for that child in your house. Like as if you have it already. Or you're praying to God for one thing or the other. Start acting like you have it already. That's what faith is. It's not just believing. You have to come to the point where you are acting like, yes, I have this thing. You're coming into agreement with God's promises for your life. It's not just waiting and not doing anything about it. And then the last set of people that I would address are those who would receive God's promise but wouldn't keep their own promise. Um, Deuteronomy 23, verse 21 to 23. Can we please have Deuteronomy 23 from verse 21 to 23? So I would read from here. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to pay it. For the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you, and you'll be guilty of sin. But if you, if you refrain from making a vow, you will not be guilty. Whatever your lips utter, you must be sure to do it, because you made your vow freely to the Lord with God, to the Lord your God with your mouth. And I'm saying this because a lot of us have made promises. Oh God, if you do this for me, I'm going to serve you better. Maybe God is keeping you in this situation because you'll probably be repeating the class. He has done something for you. You didn't keep it to your end of the bargain. So this time around, let's do it differently. For what we are trusting God for. When he answers, not if he answers, because he's going to answer. When he answers, make sure you keep whatever promises that you've made to God. He's a faithful God, yes. But he should also find you faithful. And I just want to encourage every single one of us. 
I know that for some of us, we might be in the in-between season where it feels like we don't even know where we're going. We don't know what's coming next. We've left something. We're going to somewhere, but we're not at where we're going to. And it might feel very hard. I'd like us to lean into other people. There are stories in the Bible. But today, I'd like us to practicalize something. Can, can I get the mic in the audience? So we keep hearing... One thing that I know that has been resounding every week, every Wednesday, every Sunday, is to get encouragement from people's testimonies. And I know that there's someone here. God did something for you. And someone here needs to hear what God did for you to build up their faith. And before we say it, there was this thing that happened, and God will have me share it. So I was coming to church, I think three weeks ago, and I was in a taxi, and he dropped me in front of the church, and he said, please pray for me. He's like, he was, he's not a Christian. He's like, I know your God hears. My own God, I don't know. He doesn't hear me, but then I know that your own God hears. So please pray for me. And it struck me, because I'm like, this is someone that's not even a Christian. But then he knows that our own God hears prayers. But we have people seated here, you think God cannot do what he said he would do. So this is just to encourage you. If he has said it, he would do it. And please just keep the faith alive.